Welcome back to yes another Armour 3D tutorial. Now today we're going to talk about collision masks. Now if you don't know what that is then that's okay let me just explain real quick. Imagine an FPS game similar to Call of Duty where you have a team and uh, you basically don't want to bump into your own teammates. You don't want to be pushing them around trying to navigate the terrain. So basically you're not going to collide, you're, your program is not going to detect the physics of your teammates. However, if you collide with an enemy from the opposite team, it will detect collisions and you will be able to bump into them and push them around. So that's basically what we're going to talk about. How do we define when and when not to collide with a specific object? Don't worry, we're not actually going to be using any sort of logic nodes or any sort of hack scripts or anything whatsoever. We're just going to be talking about layers. So, if you're familiar, then you should remember layers from uh, Blender 2.7 and previous. I'll get back to that in a second. Basically, let's collide, uh, well, let's collide, which let's add collisions to this first object by adding a rigid body. Set it to passive because we don't actually want that one to fall. Uh, set the collision type to be a box. And now let's do the same with the cube. Let's leave it as active and set it to be box. Now, let me just explain how they're going to collide with each other. Basically, since these two are in the same collection, they're in the same layer, they're going to be basically in the same dimension, you could imagine it as. They're going to be aware of each other's presence and uh, they're going to be able to collide with each other because of that. And if you go down to the collection tab here in the collisions, then you'll notice we have a layer system here going on, similar to 2.7 and earlier where instead of having actual collections up here we actually had a layer system but it was very limited that's why they changed it with the version 2.8 upwards so let's uh, go ahead and set this to be layer number two now let's go down to the uh, first object down here and this one would be layer number one basically we're just we've just swapped over the collisions uh, from one dimension to another you could imagine it as so usually what should happen is that since this one is on layer number one and this one is not on layer number two they shouldn't be aware of each other's presence they shouldn't be aware that the other one has collisions and so they won't collide however it's a little more complicated than that if you go down here and um, in the army props tab you have a part called collections filter mask and that's basically meaning that uh, you don't actually need to be in the same collection to be able to collide with the others. You can actually have multiple uh, collisions even though you're only in one collection. So imagine you want to collide with uh, the object in collection number two and you're in collection number one. You could just add collection number two to your amount of collision filters. So yeah, that's basically it. That's as easy as it is, if you understand. And you could actually disable it because we don't actually have any objects in the scene other than itself with uh, uh, collisions on collection number one, on layer number one. So let's go ahead and add another object by shifty duplicating the ground plane. Now, as you can see, we have a ground plane uh, so let's set the collisions to be on uh, layer number two and it's going to be able to collide with both layer number two and layer number one. The cube is also on layer number two and is also going to be able to collide with layer number two and layer number one. Meaning that uh, well also the ground plane is on layer number one and it is only allowed to collide with layer number two. Meaning that when you play the game you'll notice that the cube, well it collides. As you can see, it collides as usual. Nothing has changed. Even though we've changed layers, it hasn't moved because the cube right here is allowed to collide with layer number one. So basically, that's the whole point. It doesn't need to be in the same collection. For example, these two are in the same collection to be able to collide with the object. So imagine if we have this, this player uh, and this person are our teammates, for example, and we don't want our player to be able to collide with our teammate. So we'll set the player to be on collection number two and we'll set it to only be allowed to, colli to collide with elements from uh, maybe collection number three. 
And so we'll put the enemy in collection number three. And the enemy is allowed to collide with... Uh, who, where are you? Where are you? Yeah, why, why are we using multiple collections? Let me restart. Uh, good guys on collection number one, bad guys on collection number two. So the good guy is allowed to collide with the enemy, but not with the player, or with the teammate. The teammate is allowed uh, to collide with, well, the enemy as well, but the teammate doesn't actually move, so it doesn't matter. And uh, the enemy is on collection number two and is only allowed to collide with the good guys on collection number one. So now if we play this, the, uh, the player who's on collection number one is only allowed to collide with people on number two. Number two is the bad guys. So it should just fall right through the teammate, the ground, and only collide with our enemy right there. That's basically the whole point of uh, the uh, collection masks. It's sort of complicated to understand at first because it's a little hard to uh, sort of visualize what is actually happening. Uh, but that's essentially what is going on. You can actually just test out the collections for yourself if you're having trouble understanding. But it's essentially really easy. It's just the visualization of what's actually happening is the only problem that I actually have. So there we go. Now that we have this figured out, you can actually apply this to be uh, on the collisions of an actual player instead of just a bunch of objects falling in space. And you could actually create some interesting... Um, mechanics and it will be a very good uh, adjustment to an FPS game so you'd actually collide with the people you're not meant to be colliding with and I think Fortnite can take a leaf out of this book because honestly I'm getting pretty bored of being blocked in the doorway because of some random kid who's gone AFK. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in a well hopefully in another tutorial. Take care.